Dan Williams, Survive Outdoors, back in Illinois. I was all prepared to give you a video on epi epistaxis, bloody nose in the outdoors, and how do you take care of that uh, when you're miles away from nowhere. But when I got home, a news article hit my phone, which was a 80-year-old man died of rabies in Illinois. That's the first time since 1954. Evidently, an 80-year-old man was bitten on the neck about a month ago in his home by a bat. Uh, he refused the uh, HRIG, the immunoglobulin, and refused vaccines, and a month later, he dies. That is the first case in Illinois since 1954. I've had patients come in, and they get bit by a feral cat, and they're very worried and nervous. And I say, hey, we haven't had a case of rabies since 1954. Well, I can't say that anymore. So we're going to explain rabies. We're going to explain what animals carry it, when you should be concerned, when not to be concerned, and explain the immunoglobulin and the vaccine. So here we go. So rabies comes from the Latin word meaning madness. It's in the uh, virus family of Lysa viruses, L-Y-S-S-A, and Lysa in Greek means rage. Uh, it's obviously been around for centuries. Uh, it's a very frightening virus and it's a very terrible death. On average, when symptoms start and you do not get immunoglobulin or vaccine, you have about 23 days to live. Uh, and it's, again, it's very agonizing. The um, Dog is the primary vector across the world, not in the United States or developed countries, but in third world countries. And there is a, a, a vaccine you can take if you have to go work overseas or you're visiting overseas, and that we will also talk about. I'm going to show you a map right now and of the United States and show you where what mammals are really responsible for most rabies cases. Um, and we're looking at like raccoons on the East Coast, uh, the fox, skunk, uh, bats are clearly a number one source. And bats, of all the bats, they, they do testing every year. And about 30% of bats that are tested are positive for rabies. Rabies is number 10 on the list of most deaths in the world per year. Approximately 50 to 60,000 deaths per year. Uh, obviously, the vast majority of those are in underdeveloped countries. Behavior in these animals that carry the um, rabies uh, virus, you're going to see, yes, aggression. You're going to see nocturnal animals become diurnal. A uh, raccoon at 12 o'clock noon on a sunny day stumbling is not a good sign. Their gait is askew. Uh, sometimes when they walk, they high step, uh, you know, a lot of drooling. When a mammal gets rabies, it has a very hard time swallowing, plus the virus causes increased saliva. Um, you get rabies, the virus, from saliva primarily. You can also get it from spinal fluid. So, rare situation, you know, some hunter hunting raccoons, uh, shoots a raccoon and then he's skinning it and maybe part of the pellets from the shotgun hit the brain and maybe the animal is draining spinal fluid. That can be a cause in that way. Blood, not going to happen. So by skinning the animal out, you're not going to get rabies. <clears throat> Once humans get the symptoms, it's basically 100% fatal. So after the bite, you really need, that is when you need to get the HRIG, the human uh, rabies immunoglobulin shot, and that then you'll get the series of the uh, vaccines. Now, there was a very interesting case in 2004. A 15 year old girl in the neighboring state, Wisconsin, um, did not report, or delayed report, I should say, of a bat bite. And she, once you start getting symptoms, it's all over. Uh, you need to get the, the immunoglobulin shot and the vaccines prior to symptoms. She went into a Wisconsin hospital, diagnosed with rabies, and she lived. This is 
in all of the literature, you look in any medical text and it's going to cite this case, is very unusual. They, um, they intubated her, they put her in an induced coma, and they gave her loads of antivirals, ribavirin, and amantadine, and the girl made it. She had some speech problems for a year or two years later, uh, some disturbance in walking, but she did fine. She graduated high school, she went on to take some college courses, and did great. So they were excited about this, thinking that the antiviral, antivirals may have worked, since then, they've tried that course of treatment three, four, or five times, and it did not work. So that is not in the protocol for treatment. Um, the incubation period for rabies is about 20 to 60 days before you become symptomatic after a bite. So this gentleman that died in Illinois a few weeks ago, he basically had um, symptoms started about one month after his bite. And then the average time before you die is about 20 to 25 days. So it can, it's not just a bite. It can be also from a scratch. Certain animals, obviously like cats, lick their paws a lot. The saliva of the cat can be on the claw when it scratches you. So any of those wounds um, with a rabid animal can give you rabies and you need to be um, aware of that. Symptoms of rabies start out just like the flu. You could have a high fever, fatigue, joint pain, uh, weakness, and it's very often overlooked. <clears throat> now there's two types of rabies. There's furious rabies and paralytic rabies. Furious, furious rabies accounts for about 70% of all rabies cases. And that is the classic situation where the virus crosses what is called the blood-brain barrier and it affects the central nervous system and you have the issues with swallowing and the saliva and spontaneous agitation. Any stimulus, it could be touching, auditory, visual, can cause rage and these aggressive outbursts. Uh, and you're aware of what's going on. So emotionally, it is just horrendous. Paralytic rabies uh, is basically starts with para paralyzing the muscles in the extremities. You have a very hard time walking, moving your arms, and that is also very debilitating. But again, it's about in the 30% range. Because in the United States, we've done such an excellent job of vaccinating dogs, it's very rare to get a um, rabies from a dog or a cat. In fact, the uh, CDC doesn't even recommend a dog and cat unless it is an unprovoked attack to even start with an, uh, the immunoglobulin. The standard of care at this point is that if you can capture the dog and you know it hasn't been vaccinated, then it's really important in those situations to watch that animal for 10 days and to see if it's symptomatic. One thing that's important to note is that a cat and dog can shed the virus one to five days before it becomes symptomatic. And if you remember with COVID, this has been a whole big issue in terms of can you spread the virus without being, uh, without having symptoms. And as of today, that if you're not symptomatic with COVID, you're really not going to spread COVID virus. But there are other viruses like herpes where you can shed that virus even if you're not symptomatic. So we know with cats and dogs, it's about one to five days. And that's important to note also. So the main animals, the main vectors in the U.S. that are going to be carrying rabies are going to be bats, uh, raccoons, fox, and skunk. Uh, rabbits, chipmunks, squirrels, those mammals, very, no, don't even worry about that, not an issue. Treatment, PEP, P-E-P, -E is post-exposure prophylaxis. So in post-exposure prophylaxis, the first thing you're going to get is an HRIG, human rabies immunoglobulin. Now, for my medical personnel out there, it's uh, 20 international units per kilogram, and that is the one on day one you're going to get injected at the bite site, whether it's your leg, your arm, you're going to inject all around the bite site, even in the bite site. And that is going to slow down the virus. The virus replicates in the skeletal muscle. The farther away the bite is from the brain, 
the longer it's going to take for it to get there. So this immunoglobulin really helps to prevent that from replicating in the skeletal muscle. Then you're going to do vaccines. You'll get your first vaccine on that day, and it's day 0, day 3, day 7, and day 14. 3, 7, 14. Right, that's 0, 3, 7, and 14. 4. And that changed in 2010 to four vaccines. Those are given in the arm, not you're getting 28 shots in your stomach. No, 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 that's not going to happen. Now, if you're immunocompromised or you're elderly and you have some other issues, you will get a fifth vaccine on day 20, 0, 3, 7, 14, 28. So on day 28. So that is the regimen of treatment. It is safe to give the HRIG, rabies immunoglobulin, in pregnancy. Uh, that's really important to note. And um, boosters. The World Health Organization advises if you're a mountain climber, a trekker, and you're heading into, let's say, Nepal, or you're going to go into a third world country and you're gonna be hiking and trekking around, then you should get the booster for sure. And if you're going to spend time overseas or in highly endemic areas of rabies, then every two years you need a booster for the rabies. Uh, so yeah, that's it, man. That is the rabies virus in a nutshell, the condensed version. Uh, hope this helps clear up some confusion around rabies uh, so you don't freak out if you get bit by a cat or dog in the U.S. And uh, stay away from those bats. Another important thing is when the bat is affected by rabies, a lot of times these bats are just laying on the ground and they can't fly. And that's when children are inquisitive and they're going to pick up the bat. Big no-no. Uh, and the bat bite is usually very painless because it has very tiny teeth. So instruct your kids, you don't pick up any animal like that on the ground. Very, very important. All right, guys, hope this helps. Stay safe, keep your eyes on the horizon, your face to the wind. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Next time we're gonna do nosebleeds. Take care.